Ladies and gentlemen, broadcasting. Did it, turn your mic on. Mine? Yeah, check your mic. Check, check. There. Is it better? Oh, it's the cable. Ladies and gentlemen, is that too loud? That works. Ladies and gentlemen, broadcasting from Tumwa, Iowa, it's the one and only, the fabulous, the spectacular Claws and Convo, the show that glorifies the use of narcotics. Just kidding, kids. Don't do drugs. I am your um, not drug user host, Dante Padfoot. I'm your kitty cat host, Striker Chigwire. And I'm the guest star, the Roo, Kai. Kai Daliani. And as you can see, we have a very special guest with us today. He's a kangaroo. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling like a kangaroo. Uh-oh. No. <laughs> oh, come on. You gotta love that. <laughs> no. A- oh, come on. Nope. Don't go all grumpy cat on me. <laughs> I'll go grumpy roo on your ass. <laughs> Anyways, um, we have a great show for you today, actually. We have lots of good material. We have a um, good discussion topic. We have uh, a story. We have a new story about glow-in-the-dark cats. China is manufacturing glow-in-the-dark cats. I am not kidding you. Yeah. And they're real. Yeah. So we're going to be telling you about that later if you're curious. Stay tuned. Yeah. Our discussion topic for today is going to be uh, how wh- why a, fir- a person's fursona is so personal to them. We could go into the depth about that. And Wine Slender sent us an email asking us a couple of questions that we're all going to answer to the best of our abilities. Ooh. So it's going to be a great show. I can already tell. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Fun on the boon. So what's been new? What's new with you? <sighs> well, let's see. I'm wearing a shirt that says Ireland on it. That's all that's new with me. I got this for one dollar at Walmart because it's nobody wants them because it's not St. Patrick's Day anymore. <laughs> I got this for free and it says Leonard Skinner. That's oh, even cooler. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm going to. I'm in the process of ordering parts if I can figure out how to, if I can get the damn uh, new egg to accept my payments. I gotta, I'm going to beat up a bank teller probably to get it to work. But anyway, yeah. I there will be. I will have some new computers uh, coming. Computer components, which I'm going to build, which uh, hopefully will become the new broadcasting system for this show. So our Ooh. broadcasting system will be more stable, like a racehorse. I don't know. Racehorses aren't stable. Except for they're in a stable. <laughs> oh! Yeah. oh! I'm so funny. Except You're without so the threat of bestiality. Oh! Oh, I went there. Look, he spit out his coffee. I almost did. You asshole. I am awesome. So, Kai, would you like to tell us a little bit more about your persona? Me? Yeesh. Um, yeah. Well, um, it's basically me. Um, except without the skin. I have no skin. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, he's um, he's a red kangaroo. Um, yeah, he's just about me, just fuzzy and awesome. Yeah, I've seen uh, uh, this this guy. Is lucky because he gets commissions, or he commissions a lot of his friends, and I I still don't have any commissions for my my persona, and I'm really upset about that. I gotta give props out to all the people that I do. Yeah. Like uh, I've actually met one of the guys that have done him, and he's a pretty badass guy. His name uh, DJ Hack. Give him all your love because he's going through a little bit of a rough time. Oh. But um, yeah, just give him some love if you can find him. What was his name again? DJ Hack on FA. All right, look him up. If you're bored on a Saturday night and you've already watched all the episodes of Claws and Convo and you got nothing else to do, then you can go look up DJ Heck. He has an adorable art style. <laughs> That's good. Was it was he the guy that just did the recent commission or one before? Um No, the recent commission was uh, Isaiah Halfbreed. He's another buddy of mine. Um he did one a few like he did um one around Christmas time. Hmm. Oh, that one that was the earlier one then. Um, the one that I had the, the kind of the present. T- oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I re- I remember that one. And then you have um, yeah. You he has he has some pretty cool commissions on his page. Every once in a while he'll text me and be like, "Hey, I got a new commission." I was like, "Ooh, let me see it." <laughs> Indeed. All they I usually um make sure I know the person pretty well. Yeah, I I do have someone 
who's not a furry, this willing to do a commission for me, but it probably won't be the same because he's not a furry. Oh, well, it'll it, still be it'll, good. It'll still be pretty cool. I mean, he's an art major at Indian Hills, so I'm sure he'll do a good job, you know. So, so how, how, is it, how do you spell DJ Hacks? Uh, DJ Hack. H A K. H A K? Pretty sure. Okay. Pretty sure. And there he is. There he's we go. A, his, his fursona's name is Car Wearskunk. Nice. He's more or less a wolf with a big fluffy skunk tail. I'll oh, oh! speaking I'll of... I'll throw his FA link up on the blog. Uh, speaking of skunk tails, would you like to uh, show them your new tail you got at Hot Topic? For 15 bucks. Yes. Oopsie, he stepped on the cord. Oop. I'm facing the wrong way. How embarrassing. <laughs> you can go in front of the table and like shake it. Shake your booty. Shake, shake, <laughs> shake, 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 shake. It's actually really cool. I did. I. It's fluffy. It's fluffy. So fluffy. I didn't even know that you could get um, tails at Hot Topic until he had that one. I was like, wow, that's really cool, actually. So I'm end- gonna end up going to Hot Topic. Hell yeah! I might not get a tail, but I'll get something else because like an Invader Zim sweater. <gasps> actually, I saw a Boba Fett sweater. It had. Damn. It was Boba Fett's armor as a jacket. That's so cool. For sixty-five bucks. I did. I, I remember one of my friends, Avon, um, who was on the show one time. He uh, he's he's the Asian. He he, he sent me a link for uh, a, a hoodie that had fox ears on the hood and it Aww. had a detachable tail. It was really cool. I I would have liked to get it, but I'm not much really into the dressing up like a furry as much as everyone else is. I think it's cool, mm-hmm. but I'm just not really into it. You know. I so, only wear this tail like. When I'm not in my hometown, because I know people in my hometown, and <laughs> explaining to explaining what a furry is to um, a country person, like in <laughs> it's not easy. Nope. I I've actually done that a lot. Like most of the people I work yep. with, back when I started telling people I was a furry, all of them were the kind of people that would you know, like country people that just live out in the country. They're like, you know, I usually just tell them that it's a like like it's just anything like a fandom. It's like you know something that's a a punk or a goth. Yeah, I mean, I'd just like to say it's basically... Is this off? The cable. boop boop. doop That's there. better. I, I just basically like to tell people that yeah. it's just people that like animal people. Like, And some people are just like, oh, okay, that's cool. But then some people are actually really curious about it, and that's when I can tell them more about it. Yeah. You know, so that's that's really neat. Neato. Yeah, I, 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 often, I, uh, I can't even wear my tail out in public. And... Uh, I like, people don't really usually ask me about it. They and just kind of assume us, it's a fashion of course, thing. Usually, I've got my leather and chains, and so it actually can, does. Your tail does kind of complement the whole look that yeah. you have going on. And so. I've got the, my black fedora with the uh, two two three shell, which looks in it. badass. Nice. It's like one of the coolest fedoras I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm jealous. I, I wore uh, my tail t- the first time I got it when I brought it home. I wore it to my local Walmart. <laughs> And like I was like I was going around and and I was feeling fine and no one else noticed me until this kid came up and tried and pull it. He almost it felt like he almost was trying to rip it. Yikes! And like there was a little heated con- confrontation and he was like twelve and I said I said some words and I didn't curse at him but his mom came over and said said his name and said what the heck are you doing? Oh, she didn't say that. She was <laughs> um trailer trash. Daryl, what the heck are you doing? Pulling on that poor boy's tail. Pretty much. She didn't even, No, she actually kind of said that, and it was pretty bad. <laughs> he And then, the, like, I don't know, the kid started crying. It was oh. funny, and then I walked away. He was crying. <laughs> You're and an I, evil person. I am an evil person. For uh, laughing at this poor kid. Didn't well, laugh at his face. I laughed, laughed away from him. Well, then again, <laughs> he did try to pull your tail off, and you it's did like, not pull a furry's tail off. That's well, right. It's like, it. it's like, it's like, well, that's rude. You don't do that. You don't, you don't go up to an elderly person. You don't person go and, near the tail. <laughs> you don't go up to an elderly person and say, hey, look, rips out their oxygen tubes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> that's Bad funny. Compar- um, but yeah, I'd go to Hot Topic just because my fursona, it, my, st- my fursona dresses more in the gothic style a little bit, but, but it's not really goth. Like, I'm not a goth person, but I kind of dress like a goth. Is my, is my mic still? Yes, it is. I'm sorry, I gotta keep watching it. Every time I bump it, it might go off. But anyways, my fursona is more. It dre- she, yeah, he dresses more like a goth. So, yeah, I I might go to Hot Topic just to wear a costume, like to get get an outfit to wear at a convention or something. So get some sexy leathers. Yeah, I mean the leather jacket I have is is cool. It it looks really cool, 
but it's it looks it makes me look like I'm really really built, and I don't like that. I don't like deceptive clothing. I, uh, and it I just my persona is not a built guy. He's like really skinny, just like I am. So that's how it is. I think I'm like the skinniest one here. I don't know. No. <laughs> how, about, how about, What do you weigh? I don't weigh myself. I'm not a girl. <laughs> Uh, no. Last time I weighed myself, I was 155. I'm l- I'm like 140. No oh, I don't know. oh, hmm. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're I all just skinny mofos here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't even realize how how sk- like we're all just equally skinny as hell. Of course, of course, cool. it's win- it's been winter and I sleep all winter pretty much. Yeah. So. Yeah, I do too. The first th- the first snow I. Frolicked in the snow. <laughs> Frolic in the snow. <laughs> no, I went and jumped around in the snow and with my dogs and stuff. I have two Jump, Dude, would you fingers. say you jumped like a kangaroo? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a couple times. I actually, I actually ended up get, got a mountain bike for the summer. Oh, Woo! nice! It was actually I, it was only a hundred dollars. Really? Yeah, I that's pretty good a, for a mountain it's bike. Got, it's full suspension. I need to get a <gasps> bike so like I guess could, it's like off season. Right. When I when my brother moves in with me up here, he's gonna uh, which is gonna be a year from now. He, him and I are both gonna get mountain bikes just so yeah. we can go around to Tumwa. It's gonna be great. I love it. I, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot some some uh, trail footage. Yeah. Nice. I'm gonna get a That'll bike. Uh, I need to get a bike so I can save gas for my car because I oh, live yeah. just down the road from a bike trail that leads from this little like little townlet community all the way into my town, and like. <laughs> It's it, the bike trail leads right to where I work, so I could just ride the bike right nice. up the street. Yeah, my work. So you could. It all. It's only like a four mile bike ride, and after a little while, I get used to it. Mm. But the only thing about it is that there's no there's no motor vehicles, motor vehicles allowed on the bike trail. So I couldn't put a little motor on the bike if I wanted to. That'd be sweet. That would be funny, but I think. Or you cool. could just get a motorcycle like me. And be a badass, but I'm not suicidal. <laughs> Mo- mountain biking is has always kind of been something I've always wanted to really get into. You know, just riding, riding the yeah. dirt and that's backwards. True. Like mountain biking is and is now cool. now I've finally got a bike that can actually handle it. Yeah, I mean that's that's true. Like I mean, there's there's motorcycles where you go on the road. Yeah, which you know it's indescribable how awesome motorcycles are, but they don't. You can't mark, You you can't bike up a wooded hill on a motorcycle unless you have a dirt bike but you know that's another story but if you okay it, co- it all boils down to being able to go most anywhere without using any gas or anything you know and actually being allowed to take motor vehicles because most places don't Thanks allow me. motor vehicles um that's a lot of explain for something that's pretty simple yeah well that's what we do it's too, it's <laughs> you're, you're, you're being you're getting uh too uh What's the word you're looking specific? for? Specific. You're, you're, you're just too descriptive. Much, too much. Too much description. Descriptive. Well, that's what we do it's in Claus and Convo. We overanalyze things. Indeed. <laughs> so. Anyways. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Moving on. I almost choked on that coffee. Oh. You're welcome. <laughs> Somehow it was your fault. I know that. Oh yeah, of course. So just... how was Strikers Week? Eh, not too bad. I know I got got myself a new bike and uh Yeah, yeah. I've actually gotten into planning for uh stuff that uh would be kinda cool to do for uh Strike Plus Studios and mm-hmm. kind of expanding what repertoire. Uh doing in addition to short films and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm thinking maybe maybe do a li- little bit of uh in ga- little bit of game commentary. That'd be cool. You know, um, with a new I, computer, I could actually do that. I know that my friends and I have always been thinking about doing some kind of game commentary. But then again, then again, it seems like everyone on YouTube does already it. does. Yeah, it's like gotten to the point where it's just cliche. That's yeah, true. It's like a little ten thousand mm. game game commentary channels, and ninety ninety five percent of them suck. That's true because everyone wants to do it. You know yeah. that that is yeah. Maybe you should go apart from it and, you know, kind of just do commentary about movies. I don't know. Stuff like that. <laughs> well, Lol. you could that'd do... Like machinimas. Oh, well, yeah, you could do fun. that. I used to do machinimas for Halo. Like, when Halo 3 yeah. came out, I would do machinimas for it. It was fun. I had a lot of fun doing that. I'd like to do something, like, with Planet Side. Yeah. Can you actually do... Like, is is there some kind of theater mode in Planet Side? 
Uh, yeah, you can you can turn off your HUD and hide the gun in your arms. And so you can basically have another person as a camera. Yeah, your, yeah, that's cool. And if and if you've got a machine that can do it and can uh, handle it, mm -hmm. you can do that with Halo. Which my new my new computer that should be possible. So you could do that with Halo too. Yeah, where you basically if you like ran out and uh, anyway. picked up the skull and held down the left trigger or something like that. I don't remember what the I don't remember what the process was, but in Halo Two you could have like no weapon and stuff. It was really it really was really neat. So yeah yeah. You don't need to. Wants to know what kind of bikes, what bikes we are getting. Ah, huh. what bikes am I getting? I'm just gonna get a straight. Like I don't even care. I'm gonna buy one at Walmart as long as it rides. <laughs> I've, I've got a Mongoose Ledge Ooh, at 21 speed. That sounds awesome. And it only cost you 100 bucks. It's, it's kind of an older model. It still it still had the old the uh, old school uh, New Year pole. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, caliper brakes. Yeah, what are you so fancy. I'm it's thinking about getting my grandmother's old bike from the 1960s. I still have some of my bikes from the 1960s. I need to actually ask her if I could have that. Yeah, well, well, my dad's a professional sign painter, and one time he traded a sign job for somebody giving him like a big pile of bikes, and they were all from like the 60s and 70s. It was so cool. Like I actually really like the old bikes. They're really nicely designed, and they look cool. And they ride good. They're actually pretty decent for a, for a road bike. Yeah, a yeah. Cruiser. But, you know, obviously, you know, if I wanted to go bike around the streets of Atomo, I'd probably need, you know, uh, <laughs> I'd Stuff. probably need a mountain bike and, yeah. you know. So me and my brother are thinking about doing that during this during yeah. next next year's summer. It's going to be great. I can't wait. Woo! Woohoo! I'm going to be hitting a lot of trails around, the, like, uh, Sharon Bluff. That's just outside of Centerville has a really nice trail system and Ooh. that'd be kind of fun to rip and tear it up there. Hell yeah. yeah. I, I just distinctly remember a place. There's a, there's a trail in, in uh, Sheraton called the cinder path and everybody goes on the cinder path. Like it's a really, it's a pretty popular place. I don't remember how long it is. It's like, it's something like 20 miles. It's pretty far. It goes all the way, you know, down to Humiston and, uh, one time me and my friends decided to bring a tent and camp just randomly on the trail, and it was so fun. I, I love doing that. Right on the trail? Yeah. right. Well, not we didn't set up the tent in the middle of the trail, but we set it like right next to the trail. Oh, you should have. It would have been funny to see people just <laughs> people coming out just, of nowhere. Just biking up being like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> we can't rest. Rest. <laughs> Well, think about sleeping on, like the trail had rocks on it. So well, imagine I, just sleeping on the big chunk, you know, big chunks of rocks on the, on, uh, it was... Just the thought, it makes me, makes then, my back Then you'd get a rude you get awakening. A, you get a rake. Flying down the trail <laughs> You could get fast. a rake or a broom. <laughs> it was not worth it. Roadkill. Speaking of camping, me and Liam Wolf, who used to be on the show quite frequently, um, me and him went camping during spring break, which was last week, and we didn't expect it to get 20 degrees at night. All we had was our sleeping bags. We didn't have any extra blankets, no pillows. All we brought was our sleeping bags. We froze our asses off. It was Rox so. Roxanne asks, "What kind of motorbike? What kind of motorbike? If you had to choose one, motor like is in motorcycle or like a bike that has a motor, like a little motor that I don't I don't even know. I'm sorry. <laughs> and what motorbike have you had to choose one? I have no idea. I don't. I, I'm sorry, but I don't know any of the brands. Well, I know Schwinn, but what, everyone knows Schwinn. I think I, I'm assuming motorcycle. Okay. What do you ride? I ride a 1996 Kawasaki 800. It's real. It's a really, really beautiful bike. She runs nice. Her name is Lucy. <laughs> In fact, it is a beautiful bike. Like a yeah, it is. Striker's seen it. Like like I said, my dad is a professional sign painter, and he's he's he actually painted Dante's Lucy on the fr right. on the on, it, on the tank. It's it's so freaking cool. I'm so happy. <laughs> I wonder why it's called Lucy. Hmm. hmm. Actually, I'm, yeah. I'm more, I'm more of a Harley Davidson guy myself. I, I was gonna have a motorcycle. I'd get an Indian. Although they're extremely rare, and because the company went out of business fifty fucking years ago. Well, yeah. I mean, y you'd be lucky finding one for like under fifty thousand dollars. Yep, they're expensive. <laughs> and even then. Indians that are, even then, Indians that are in bad shape, or that are even in good shape, 
they still don't run very good. Like Indians, they were known for just not running really well. Same. Uh, I, mean, I hate to say it, but Harleys are the same. They're uh, just they were well the uh, era that was when while well, they were owned by uh, AMC. That that era was was the terrible era. <coughs> Those particular uh, generation, they leaked o- had problems with leaking oil and mm-hmm. it's bad. But after the after Harley Davidson bought, after the company was bought back by the original owners, it, they got a lot better. That's that's understandable. But yeah, my I I've never I know liked this Harley's history because my dad's always history lesson for been, you kids. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, my bike is named after Lucy from Better Days, straight up, because everyone loves Lucy from Better Days. If you haven't read Better Days, you're not a human being. <laughs> no, uh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I miss my dad's old tar- old Harley. Yeah, it was it was, it was painted by the same my brother who was the same guy who painted my guitar. Ooh, which there's a picture of it up on my for affinity. That's pretty cool. So your your brother does like shop work and yeah, stuff he, like that. He he does professional on of paint jobs and That's awesome. Um and actually he's uh, he's been painting a lot he's down in Phoenix, down like in Phoenix area. Ooh. And uh, he paints a lot of trophy trucks. Cool. And what one of his clients is uh Jesse James this racing team. That's really cool. Neat. That's that'd be nice yeah. to say my brother does that kind yeah. of stuff, you know. My brother is just a computer yeah. drafting person. That's really lame. He's dead inside. <laughs> He's I, dead inside. I took I, I took drafting for a while. Mm. I got bored. Yeah, I mean that's why I didn't like. Everyone told me. I mean, I I was good at it, but computer yeah. drafting. Do you mean like designing? Yeah, auto like AutoCAD and. Well, that's boring. I've I've but always had a. I would I was had I was having fun with that. I went to college for a while, but. In college, they made me take Introduction to Computers, mm-hmm. which, Boring. of course, I've already torn apart and put back together three yeah, different I was, computers. Yeah, I was the same. So I took a, I took an Intro to Computers class. And too much. Yeah, I already took my Intro to Computers pointless. class. It was so easy. Um, but yeah, I've always had a natural talent for computers, and people when's, always told me. When Slender has joined us. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for sending us that email. It actually really means a lot. Ruffle now. <laughs> anyways... I've always had a talent for computers, and everyone always said, "Oh, you should go to college for computer stuff." And and you know, I was like, uh, I, d- "I don't. Basically, I don't it's want my stuff. my fun hobby to turn into a career. Like it just it would ruin the hobby for me, you know. And I I just couldn't see myself doing that because I'm too much of a nerd. Uh, I'm too much of a well <laughs> nerd isn't the word for it. It's more like characterized person, somebody who doesn't like to be just kept down in an office all day and you know yeah. so I went to school for acting. Woo, Woo! <laughs> So that's gonna be really fun. And I mean I'm not in school yet. <laughs> no. Are are you actually planning on like going wait, you said you were going to IT tech. I wanted to I wanted to see about going to IT tech to do be like a computer programmer. I wanna be one of those guys that you call up, come to your house, make sure you're not looking at dirty, dirty, dirty porn. <laughs> Clean out all the viruses, put in brand spanking new virus protection at it, charge about $200 an hour, and then leave. That's That would be a good career, actually. I could go home, play nerd stuff, and then when I get called again, oh. <laughs> $200 an hour, damn. Well, not not literally that, but... But that's just an overestimate, Yeah, I guess. I'm pretty sure they, they get a lot of money. Because, you know, they spend like an hour on the job. Mm-hmm. Like on each job, and they just make sure you're not doing dirty stuff, you know. Pretty much. Yeah. But my dad did the same thing. He didn't go to a college. He followed his dreams, and he supported a family of ten. So there. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah. How many siblings? I have, I have seven siblings. So oh, there's God. eight. So there's eight kids in my family, and two adults, obviously. Um, Are you guys Catholic? Nope. Irish? Nope. We're biblical Christians. <laughs> What? Catholic Irish, because I'm wearing the Irish shirt. Indeed. <laughs> I was a pun because, you know, Catholics have a lot of kids. Mm. Uh, come on. Yeah. I, I don't consider myself belonging to a certain religion. Neither do I. Religions are, are ran by evil people. <laughs> well, actually, the new pope, he's a pretty cool guy. I don't know. Uh, nah, <laughs> I mean, he, I guess he's probably cooler than the last one, but I still don't know. The last one quit. <laughs> How dare he? <laughs> How he said, dare I don't he? like talking to God. Hmm. Did he say that? No, it's, well, there, there's a lot of cover-ups, and the Pope is usually to blame. Ex- yeah, the the Catholic Church just is known it's, for that kind of thing. Yeah, so. Con- considering that Vatican City 
he's like the king of Vatican City. It is. And, a, it is its own country. Yeah. And he's one deck of a ruler. Yep. So. On a lighter note, <laughs> I like to go shoot stuff. Yeah. Yay! You tell us a little bit about that. Yes, I like to collect firearms. And I like pointy things and stuff like that. I like pointy things. I like pointy <laughs> things. And no, I'm not one of those people that would go, hey, that like that would f- get freak out and, you know, go on a mer- homicidal rampage. I'm actually one of the calmest people. As, as, I as in you're not affiliated with the NRA. No. Mm. Actually, I'm a lifetime member of the NRA. Really? Uh, yes. My father signed me up when I was like 12. I said, okay, uh. I get magazines free for a month. Okay. <laughs> cool. And my dad and I, we just collect firearms. We... I need to learn more about him, but I know more than most people. His uh, his dad is really cool. He plays Warcraft. Indeed, my dad plays World of Warcraft. That's cool. He's a cop and he plays Warcraft. Okay. <laughs> I won't say anything. I'm not Indeed. supposed to say anything. <laughs> now, well, my dad's really cool. He's he ta- he's taught me all I know. And um I remember when I was 6 years old, um, just down the road from me, it was a snowy, really snowy day. My dad took me out with a couple of, other, of his other work buddies, and they had just confiscated a fully automatic Thompson, and I got to shoot that Ooh. when I was only six years old. My dad, ba- I, ba- my dad basically held the gun, and I got to pull the trigger, and I thought that was giggly awesome. But still, shooting a Thompson when you're six years old. I only, that is I so only cool. remember the briefest memory of that. I remember yeah. my dad right next to me. And and I see the gun, and that's not all I really remember. But I remember it was it was one of the earliest memories I have. Actually, no, the earliest memory I have was me getting my tongue stuck into a little door handle on a cabinet at my grandmother's house. What? <laughs> I was like three years old, and that's my earliest memory. And yeah, my my dad actually just uh, had a sh- had a match in uh, a shooting match in uh, Columbia, Very nice. and got uh, first in his division. Nice. So anyway, since we're on this... And and he's half blind. Whoa. Nice. And nice. since we're on the little topic of earliest memory, Dante, what is your earliest memory? Well, let me think. My, I think my earliest memory was when I was five, and I just turned five, and I, and I had this card that somebody gave me that said, you know, congratulations, you're five years old, like the ones you can buy at, you know, Walmart and stuff. And I was so proud of it. For some reason, I was... This was at, like, my church down in Cambria, and I was showing everybody that day. I was this five-year-old kid running around going, I got this I got this card from, I don't remember who it was, I'm five years old today. Good for you. <laughs> that was my earliest memory. What about you? Oh, my earliest memory. Um, probably it goes back a little ways. Probably back in the 90s, like 1994. Four ninety five. Back in my kindergarten days, that was just quite a while running ago. around in the play, run around that uh, over at the uh, sc- in school playground. Did you grow up in Centerville or did you move there? I grew up in Centerville. All right. So, anyways, actually, we- uh, okay, just the last one. One of my also earliest memories is when I was like four years old. I used okay. My dad, my mom, and I. Back when my mom and dad were still married. Um, we used to live in Norwalk, just outside of Norwalk in a trailer house with my brother and I and my mom and dad. And I remember I used to go to a church there for preschool. If you're, for, if any of you have, have ever been to Norwalk, you might know which preschool I'm talking about. But, um, I remember when I was four years old, me just out in the open, it's like, I have to pee. <laughs> and I started to, I, I went pee right in the middle of the playground and all the other kids are going, eh! Wow. I remember that. And I. <laughs> when you gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> I look back on that sometimes and say, wow, that was funny. <laughs> All right. Well, looks like we're about one minute away from our news segment. So, anything else they want? Anyone else want to say anything Baloo? for the random banter segment before we move on? Pancakes. Pancakes? <laughs> Pancakes and bacon. No, bacon. Bacon is evil. What? Indeed. Bacon, gay bacon. Gay bacon. Bacon. Gay bacon. We were eating gay bacon last night. You mean basically those airhead, you know, sour strip thingies that are like rainbow colored? They look like rainbow colored <laughs> bacon that's like uh, put uh, has a bunch of sugar on it. Hey, we, big meal time. We call it gay bacon. 
<laughs> Actually, Epic Meal Time came up with that coin term. Got to give yeah. them props. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So Let's it made me get feel. Into snooze. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our newest segment here on the fabulous, the one and only, the fantastic Claws and Convo. Thank you for watching. Tonight on Claws and Convo. Chinese that engineer glow-in-the-dark cats? What? With your hosts, Dante Padfoot and Striker Chiguar. This is Claws and Convo News. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. All right. So you want me to read the first story today? Yes. Okay. We'll save the glow-in-the-dark cats one for the last one. Just just as a big middle finger to you guys, so you have to keep watching to see that one. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here's a new story called, Why Justin Bieber Should Not Have a Monkey. <laughs> well, I like to... Uh, these interesting titled stories always draw me in, so I have to read these. I haven't, I haven't read it yet, so I don't even know what it's about. How Boop, dare boo. you not read that? On his recent travels in Europe, Justin Bieber ran into some problems in Germany. He had not obtained proper papers to bring his pet capuchin monkey into the country, so the monkey was put into quarantine. <laughs> that made us wonder, do capuchin monkeys make good pets? We asked no. Debbie We asked Debbie Lee, manager of Cap Captive Wildlife Protection for the Human Society of the United States. Is it okay to have a pet monkey? No primate species should ever be kept as a pet. They have very special needs. These are highly social animals. They need to be kept with others of their own kind. That's just critical to their psychological well-being. Yet breeders in the U.S. sell monkeys as pets. There are numerous problems with the pet monkey trade. For one thing, the breeders will, put, will pull newborn monkeys from their mothers when the baby is just a few days old. So when the animals are bottle-fed and hand-reared and hand by people whatever that means, they never learn to become a capuchin or a chimp or a macaquia. Let me see. Let me see. Macaquia. Makik. Makik. Thank oh. you. They don't have the opportunity to learn appropriate behavior for their mother or others in their group. In and other yet words, it's they illegal. Become, they become not. Yep. Exactly. And yet it's legal to breed and sell a monkey as a pet. It varies by state and by city. Some states may, par may partially ban primates as pets. Oftentimes, you see capuchins and other small primates um, exempt by those law from those laws. Because they're small, primarily, people pretty much understand that a cap ch chimpanzee would could kill you. Look what a chimp did to that poor woman in Connecticut. It ripped her face off. Yeah, I heard about that. Because of their physical strength, they are incredibly dangerous. And capuchins don't make good pets either. Also because chimpanzees are extremely territorial. There's been accounts that chimpanzees will uh, rip the uh, doodads off a guy. Yeah. That's that's pretty scary right there. I don't want to be the person alive. They, yeah. they go ape. So he basically castrates them, except in a more brutal way than just cutting them off. Yeah, they and bite. All primate species can become aggressive. A lot of times when the primate reaches sexual maturity, it becomes extremely aggressive, unpredictable, bouncing Pent off up the... and horny. Yup. <laughs> bouncing off the walls in the house, destroying everything. It ends up being confined for the rest of its life in a little cage in the basement, or the owner looks to dump it, maybe at a roadside zoo or a suedo sanctuary. What is a suedo sanctuary? Pseudo sanctuary? A place that claims to be to be a rescue operation when it's actually either keeping animals in substandard conditions or breeding and selling animals, which no legitimate sanctuary would do. What? Uh, this is really long. Like really it, it long. Remi it reminds me of uh, something I heard about. Uh, you remember a, a, gr a gorilla that 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 they taught sign language? Yeah. Was Coco. Yeah, I heard about R that. Rip, rip this sink out of the wall and bl and blame the cat. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Like I I remember um, hearing about didn't didn't her owner die or something like that, and then she signed the thing for the sign language for sad or something. Yeah, I heard about that. That's didn't really they cool. release her back into the Congo? I think I think she, I don't know. I think she died. Mm, that's yeah. sad. What might a parent say to a child who still wants a pet monkey like Justin Bieber has? No. You can admire an animal without wanting to cage him and keep him in inhumane conditions. That's completely true. If, if a little kid wants a monkey, say no and say, do you want a puppy? Hmm. And if they say yes, you're not getting a puppy. <laughs> yeah, but basically, um, 
you know, uh, basically so there are animals that, that can be kept as pets that are domesticated by humans on purpose, and there are also animals that should not be kept as pets, and I never thought that monkeys made good pets. They're primates, just like people. It's you got to put it into perspective that they are like us. They're mm-hmm. social. They don't like to be alone. Yeah, um, and, you know, same thing with foxes. You know, if, it, if anyone has a pet fox... Some of them are really heavily domesticated and they do okay, but in general, like normal red foxes just are not, they don't work well as pets as much as I hate to say it um, because they need constant attention. Otherwise, they will just start to ignore you. So I yeah. read a story. It, and it's just not healthy for, for yeah, a wild not, animal to be captive. Yeah, yeah, and that's the basis of it, you know, so it's just not good. Period. I remember hearing about a story a few years ago about this, these people in Russia, actually, of all places, they were actually domesticating Russia. foxes. And what was interesting is that as they were progressively going down the generations of these foxes, they, their features would actually change from vulpine to more canine-ish because their ears would go from perky and, to perky triangles to actually kind of floppy. I actually heard about this, too. Like, I read all this, and they actually got spots on them. Like, it looks like a painted horse. You it's know? like, well, that's interesting it is interesting it's like the phys- the physical properties of this cre- of this creature actually changed and i was like wait that weird yeah, i think their tails also got like really short and they didn't get fluff they 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 weren't fluffy anymore you know That's sad they didn't fluffy. look like foxes anymore that's really sad but there actually is a woman in ohio that i i saw that actually domesticates foxes and they she apparently domesticated them just enough that's they're not too much, but they're all they're really friendly with humans, and they they make good pets, but they're not too domesticated like the ones you know in Russia where they completely change their features just because. Does uh, she let like let them have their own space and stuff? I'm not sure, but I, well, I uh, the way that I was thinking like that is like that she probably might have a large enclosure mm-hmm. that ha- that's maybe like forested or something like that where she could just go in and. Yeah, but if you do that to foxes, they will be if the you know they'll grow up like wild foxes and they'll be afraid of humans completely you know so that's not good but I, I i'm not even sure exactly what she does but she she claims that she domesticated foxes better than anyone else you know gets it she claims she got it perfect so if i ever wanted a pet fox that would be it um and there's probably permits you have to look into lots of permits mm-hmm. yeah. just like trying to own a wolf or a cougar yeah yeah, yeah. I actually, one of my, I have someone that I worked with that had a purebred wolf that adapted her family. And um, I told Dante this story yesterday, but um, this she, this wolf has passed away. You know, it, uh, it was quite old. And it was with her family for like 16 years. And when her kid her kids are like in like maybe 16 or 17 when they were about 8 or so someone had broken into her house and the wolf the wolf and they were all asleep and stuff and the wolf woke up went into the living room and saw this guy and knew he wasn't you know friendly or whatnot because they would introduce new people with the family and the wolf would associate them as you know friendly so the wolf didn't know this person and actually attacked him and ripped his leg from it and ripped his leg off. And so this guy doesn't walk anymore. <laughs> well, that'll teach you to break into people's houses. There's good, you never know. You'll be going to, into houses, breaking into all of them. And then one day you'll break into one that will have a freaking wolf in the living room <laughs> or ninja cats or, a, well, yeah, all cats are ninjas. So indeed. Um, let's see. Do we want to move on? Do you, do you want to read a story striker? Yes. Okay, just just go ahead and pick one. I will be right back. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's do... Let's do the alien cat. The what? Alien cats are put in England. So wait. It like, as in... I guess we'll just wait till the story... Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Once it loads, my internet is being retarded, as it usually is, so... And that is not... Okay, this link is not working. Hmm. So I... Is the link just straight up not working? I guess not. Hmm. Well then. Sort of a... <laughs> that was weird. 
R-X-O-N-S says, Aw, wolves are awesome. Yes, they are. <laughs> but some of them will rip Could your legs off. Could these ten animals be resurrected? Oh, I've seen this, yeah. This is cool. Give me mic so I can talk into it and reading. All right. Take it away. Okay. Okay, so new technologies could make it possible to to bring extinct species back to life. Concludes a published paper published on April fourth in the journal in the journal Science. These advances include back breeding, assembling or reassembling an extinct species genes, cloning, and genetic engineering. So uh, we got oh. over there. We got the woolly mammoth. Oh yeah. If we could resurrect the a woolly mammoth, the that'd be cool. Tasmanian tiger. I'd rather have a Tasmanian tiger. <laughs> yeah, those are cool. Tasmanian tigers. You got to go the with passenger the passenger pigeon. Animal. Perinian ibex. Yeah, yeah, you got it right. Saber cat. Smilodon. Yow. The dodo bird. The poor dodos, they were hunted to extinction. Who they killed them anyway? Their own stupidity. That's actually <laughs> quite funny. Their own stupidity, that's why they call did them a dodo really? bird. Yep. They, do, 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 do. There, there are stories that, uh, of uh, when, when the uh, sailors were uh, arrived and uh, there were making that make their settlements. Uh dodo birds would come along and just hop right into the pot. <laughs> that that's kinda funny. <laughs> it's like, oh look, free food. Woo <laughs> Another one nope. is the ground sloth. Ooh. Well, uh, we can all know why the ground sloth died. Yep. <laughs> the Irish elk. Ooh. Anything Irish, I'm happy. The Neanderthal. Hmm. That's interesting. That'll, that'll be interesting. Oh, yeah. The dinosaur. Ooh. Jurassic that, Park. That would be tricky. Jurassic Park has officially gone real. Actually, I did see a news story just recently about um, they actually did find um, dinosaur embryos in China. Hmm. Like, they legitly did. There's no joke about it. So that's that's what happens in the first part of... Uh, 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 Jurassic Park, though, so you never know what's what might happen. <laughs> Although they, in Jurassic Park, they used frog embryos. Oh yeah, and then they just like engineered probably them. wouldn't work yeah. in reality. Nope, I don't think so. <laughs> That's one of the more unlikely things that they could get. It'd be hard to get an intact uh, DNA for hmm. something that's been dead for for. Millions and mm. millions of years. Rx on S says, I wonder if dinosaurs are delicious. Hmm. I wonder that too. I wonder what their meat tastes like. Probably tastes like chicken. Yeah. We're horrible people. <laughs> oh, new animals coming up that we haven't seen in, in who knows how long. And we're like, oh, let's, let's see what they taste like. <laughs> but the problem is that I agree with you. <laughs> oh, boy. You could quite easily use adult cell cloning, she says. He, she says. Who is this? Is it a he, she? She, he, he, she? <laughs> herm. Is she. Or hers or herm. They probably taste like chicken, says Wine Slender. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you want to move on to the next news story? Indeed. Uh, yeah. All right. Do you have one? I have another one. All right. Are you guys what? ready for this one? This is the kicker for today. Poor Scientists ah. produce glow-in-the-dark yeah. cats. Ooh. Meow. If you didn't think cats could get any cuter, wait until you hear this. <laughs> okay. When scientists er- inherit Rhesus macula, you me read that it. for me. Go Let right me see there. it. Illiterate. I'm just kidding. Rhesus oh, macaque. I think it's macaque. Well, no, it's macaque. It doesn't matter. It's M A C A Q U E. Yeah, it's macaque. Macaque. Okay. Yes. Plus jellyfish genes. Into unfertilized cat eggs, the cats that result post-fertilization are resistant to feline 
immunodeficiency virus, which causes female AIDS. They also glow fluores- fluorescent Immuno- green under special lights. What if you do this to human eggs? Hmm. I don't really know. So let's just stick to talking about cat eggs. So, yeah. Researchers at the Mayo Clinic have been creating glow-in-the-dark FIV-resistant cats as part of their research on HIV slash AIDS and other diseases through gay... Jimmy. Let me see. Jimmy. Let me we'll just see. look at it right there. Gamite. Gamite. Gamite targeted lentiviral transgenesis. Okay. And cat eggs. The scientists don't actually cure the cats of FIV, which is feline... Uh, yeah, feline AIDS, but gain a better understanding of what factors might thwart the gene therapies. The glow effects might, the glow effect helps scientists to track the activity of the cat's modified genes and cells. As Mayo researcher Dr. Eric, uh, Dr. Eric Poshla told Live Science, we want to see if we can protect the domestic cat against its AIDS virus, if we can protect any species eventually, including ours, against its own, its own HIV AIDS virus. His groups hope their research can protect both humans and cats from their perspective IVs. Seems like the -the glow-in-the-dark aspect could also benefit both species by enabling humans to see their pet cats late at night (laughs) and route to the bathroom, thereby preventing tripping accidents and cat smotherings. Such a noble goal (laughs) has never been nobler before. And yes, the glow cats have names. TG Cat 1, TG Cat 2, and TG Cat 3. Cute. Creative. (laughs) Not really, but meh. No, as in, like, sarcastic, creative. Really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, you just, uh, if you... Ruin those cats' lives forever. I, I, I guess it, it didn't say... Say it again. That would probably ruin those cats' lives. Yeah, I'd imagine I still, so. Like, it's like, you rob them of their stealth powers. Well, yeah. They're not ninjas anymore. They, well, they, they, they can't... They they can't they're cloaking... Has been disabled. <laughs> you have thrown an EMP grenade. Ha <laughs> ha! That's funny. It it did say that you need like a special light to see them. So I don't know. Maybe it's um at least I don't, I don't know. It's as far as I know, there's no real negative effects because it doesn't say anything about real negative effects. But you never know. Of course, I'm not going to say there's negative effects. Yeah, you never Where's know. Where's the money in, in telling everyone the negatives? I don't know these these cats. Like if you look at the picture here, um, it looks like they're just. It looks like they've been exposed to toxic waste. That's just crazy. You know, you know that, it's like a black light. That reminds me. You know who that reminds me of? Who? Glow stick. A furry. There's a, a furry by the name of Glow stick. Oh, nice. A, Does he have like a she, glowing she, fur suit? She's she's a gr- she's a. What about Glow Fox? She's in a, a, a green tiger. Ooh. Sweet. Actually, that actually that reminds me of Glow Fox as well. You guys know who that is? I think I've heard of him. You need to look him up. He is awesome. He's got he does a lot of prawn, but <laughs> his art is cute. He does music work he too. Does a lot of prawn. <laughs> Kitties don't ask what that is. It's porn. There, I said it. Oh, woo, <laughs> porn. <laughs> oh boy. So let's see. We've already talked about this. Do we want to move on to another news story? Or do we want to just go ahead and go into the discussion topic? But then again, we got another twelve minutes. Let's get let's uh, go into these questions. Oh yeah, good idea. Because then we can get these out get these out of the way. So let me. Do you want to just ask him, or do you want me to? I'll ask him. Okay. Do you want to start from the top? Yeah. These are questions that Wine Slender has sent us. This is a good example for all you guys. Send us questions like this. We like answering questions. Okay. Proceed. Okay. We'll start. Right. Where do you think furries are the most common at? Um, I would say the East Coast because, I don't know, I, I, I just hear about a lot of furries that live near the East Coast. And, you know, it's easy for them to get to Anthrocon, and that's probably why Anthrocon is the biggest, you know. Yeah. So it's, either it's closer the, to them. It's either that or California. The, right. Yeah, actually, I did hear about a lot of furs in California, and you know, I, I guess I would say that United States has the most because I, I hear about s- almost every furry convention is in the United States. There it's are, either that you're, it's either that Britain or Germany. Yeah, there there are quite a bit. Of, in fact, I heard about a massive yearly furry parade that goes on in London. In London, yeah, yeah. that's the, pretty cool. The London furry scene is probably the most open because for some reason the British love. 
counterculture. Well, it is, yeah. it's where the it's where the Beatles came from. It's where the Who came from. It's where the Pink Flo- it's where Pink Floyd came it's from. It's where Adele came from. Indeed, I'm a big Adele fan. So I, I mean, <laughs> the British are more accepting of stuff. We're p- too prudish. That's pr- yeah. That sounds uh, actually which about is right. funny because more or less. A lot of Americans have a stick sho- shoved so far up their ass that they it, can't see. It's mm-hmm. actually, if you think about it, it's, it's kind of ironic because England is kind of a... Um, it's the old the, world. Theocracy, theocracy, or, um, theocracy it's like the crown is like... Yeah. Under, goes under God and all that. All that. So that like, yet there's no... They have. They're more accepting of atheists and. Yeah, the, which is really, w- and, really topsy turvy, actually. And here in America, oh, yeah. we're we're like. America. We have like the separation of church and state, and still we've got uh, you know, these uh, Bible banging, uh, you know, Southern. Hey, look at that. Yeah. You know, One of my friends that I actually. Uh, jobs. One mm. of my friends that I actually got to watch this. His and name is uh, Ruxon. He's actually British. He's on the. The chat right there. Oh, so that's the one he, that's in there. Yeah, he's Rick's son. Or he's actually a long box. <laughs> he's actually pretty cool. He's from Britain, and Ooh. he can vouch for that. Is it, uh, I can't read it from back here. Uh, I can. Uh, I'll, I'll drag it onto my monitor. Onto these. He's a pretty badass guy. Mm-hmm. I can grab hold of it to the window. Okay. Yeah. Um, I can vouch for that. Anything goes here. Yeah, that's 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 pretty cool. Like, I know Furcast has a regular caller that's from Britain that they know that that just tells them what's going on in Britain and stuff. And he always has yeah. interesting things that specifically related to furries that are, that's going on in Britain. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. You know, yeah. I don't I don't know. There's definitely a pretty strong uh, furry community over there, but I don't know if there's any conventions. Yeah, as far as I yeah. know, they I th- there might be one in London, but I don't think it's very I th- popular yet. I, th- I think there is a London, like a London convention. I yeah, so think, but uh, other than that, the only one that I know of right offhand is uh, um, Eurofriends over in Germany. Oh yeah, I mean it, that's like one of the most popular ones. Yeah. It's apparently, but you know, look to around, the renting, you'll find something. To the renting Griffin said that his personal favorite is Eurofriends, so that's yeah. pretty cool. Um, but yeah, anyways, to answer your question, Wine Slender, um, we've been talking about this for a while. The fi- our answer is either California or the wet or the uh, one of the coasts. That's for sure, not the Midwest. Even though there is a lot of people that go to Midwest Fur Fest, they come in from both coasts. I think it's because so, it's centralized. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. So I would I would I would guess that they're from both coasts. I would. I, I don't know which one is more. A lot of people here in Iowa also they. They're more accepting of it because, well, it's kind of like how most people are in the state. It's like most of us are friendly and shit. But you got the people that are like from everywhere. Like, yeah. I've, it's most people just don't care. They say, hey, just do what you want. Just don't bug me. That, that yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's our proximity to Canada. Oh, <laughs> Canada. <laughs> how dare you, I mean, you give got, us you got Justin Mi- Bieber. You got Minnesota, <laughs> which Minnesota is basically Canada. Mm-hmm. And then I was just right right there between Minnesota and Missouri. So we're like we're, in between. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're, we're kind of stuck in between the rock and uh, like what's the rock fu- and what, hard place. What's funny well, is that not quite a rock and hard place. It's like, like n- Northern like, Iowa is predominantly white and then you get down south and it's honestly the boondocks. Yeah. You get down s- there is Southern almost Southern Iowa. Yeah. There is, there is almost a line straight through the middle of Iowa just going along the axis that is like oh look country folk and White folk and yeah, mm-hmm. like Northern Iowa. There's a lot of colleges like Ames and you know places yeah, like yeah. that. There's two incredibly good colleges here in Iowa. Actually, in my hometown, Indianola, there is a wo- world-renowned college called Simpson College, and that's actually an incredibly good school. Yeah. God awful expensive, mm-hmm. but <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Same thing with Iowa State. It's like world-renowned and it's expensive. We so. like there's laboratories and stuff like that, and there's lots of research going on. Yeah. Most of it around agricultural, but, you know, that's good. It is good. So, anyways, moving on to the next question. Indeed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when, what do you think is the most common way to get for people to, to get into the fandom? The uh, internet. The interwebs. Enough indeed. said. Like, people, definitely the internet, because that's, uh, I mean, people... 
I, I know I know personally that I've I've actually turned some people furry by talk just by you know personal telling them about it. But I believe that the people that that are that know they're born with it, like they they immediately love it. The first picture, you know, the first artwork they see, the the internet reaches out to people like that, and that's why we have so many furries is because people surf the internet and they find this stuff and they're immediately hooked. So I would definitely say the internet. I would have to agree. I, I was like, I hate to say it, but a lot of the way how some people find it is through, well, porn, honestly. Yeah, said, that's unfortunately. It's, it's, in, it's all accidental. I'm all okay with the <laughs> porn and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. I the people that just go, murring, there, it's like, it's like, like they, some people just take it too far and like, like, if, don't be a creeper, <laughs> respect the art, the boundaries of artists and people like, I like, I like a lot of people's arts, and I think it's all really awesome. But I say, hey, you have really good art and stuff like that, and I leave it at that. Don't talk with your dick, in other words. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah. It's like, don't be a butthole. Literally. Just, yeah. Just, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> be cool, man. Be cool. Um, is my mic? Yes, it is. Okay. Oh. That, one's, that one's a pretty self-explanatory one, yeah. so moving on. How did you get, come up with your persona's name? Ooh. Oh. And this this one we can go into as we go into the discussion topic, but we can just briefly touch on it right now. I can. Uh, mine is short and sweet and to the point. <laughs> it's played World of Warcraft, and one of my friends made a rogue, and he just was clicking, clicking, clicking the random name generator and stuck with it, and it was Kai Deliani. And it was a female human rogue, and I have stuck with that forever. Mm-hmm. And people say, hey, how do you say your name? Just say Kai, goddammit. Just say Kai. <laughs> you don't K- have to say the whole thing. Um, and my persona is basically just based off of Dante Alighieri, the 12th century Italian poet, that the one that did the Divine Comedy, also known as Dante's Inferno. Who descended upon it, who descended into hell and basically went on a tour. Yup. <laughs> and, uh, D- and Padfoot is just my favorite character in Harry Potter. I'm, I'm un- but basically, I mean, the reason I incorporated the Padfoot name is because my character is an animagus. Just like, if you don't know what that means, it means somebody an animal who, can, mage. who can turn into an animal whenever they feel like it. Kind of like a werewolf, only they have freedom over it, you know? So like a druid in World in uh, Warcraft. Yep, yep. And, uh, yeah, I mean, basically it's pretty simple. Dante, I just relate to him historically. He was the guy that stayed home while all of his friends went out and, and went to war, and he would stay home and write poems, and that's me. So, anyways. Uh, my, my, na- my persona is named Storker. Uh actually came from a, from a book I read a long time ago and uh and uh and then I thought well that's a pretty cool name and uh, <laughs> then then you know a few sh- not long after that the uh the w- that the the uh military vehicles the striker the eight wheeled uh wolf war machine mm-hmm. was it's spelled different differently i think but uh so, it was just too badass to to turn not up. use. So. Yeah, <laughs> it is pretty cool. Like you know, when you just hear the word striker, you're like, oh, this guy's a badass. You know, so it really it actually does kind of whoa. What's up for that? <laughs> it it actually really does um incorporate your kind of personality yeah. with your persona then, because your your character is like a like a badass cat. You know that you know likes to fuck shit up. So. Um, it's, it's just metal. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's basically our. Uh, I mean, we can we can go in more detail about this later when we get into the discussion topic of, which yeah. is going to be w- how why a person's persona is so personal to them. Yeah. So uh, how yeah. are you? How are you guys? Are or are you guys into the sexual side of the fandom at all? Um. Uh, Do we have to answer this one? Uh, yeah, it's, I'm going to answer well, this one. It's pretty. I think. No, okay. We got to be honest. I mean, Answer. come on. Um, I am a little bit. I, you know, as much as I hate to say it, I actually am. Uh, there is a little sexual side to it, but it's not. It's it's, all, it's just porn. Yeah, it's. it's I mean, porn. I'm not. I I do like some of it, but in general, I just don't. In general, I don't like porn. I like pinups of fox girls. That's what I have. You know, somebody looks through my phone. They're they're like, oh, that's really weird. I'm like, just wait till you see whatever that was on every other furry's phone. You know, mine mine is I have fully clothed fox girls on my phone, and everyone else, you know, likes to. All I have on my phone is see that's that's cool. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. All I have on my phone is pictures of me of my yeah. characters or just you know cute little pictures that my friends have made. I actually have a little you guys probably know what I'm talking about but, but I have um Neon Cat, a little picture oh. of Neon Cat. It's a sculpture of Neon Cat someone did. I found this on FA. 
and it has a huge bite taking out of it, and there's rainbow goo coming out of it, <laughs> and it's dead. And I just think that's awesome. That's awesome. But yeah, as far as the sexual side goes, um, I hate to say it, but I am a little bit uh, in the, a little bit in the sexual side, but I don't really show it very often. You know. You know what about you guys? Uh, you gotta be honest. That's, I'm, I, I like some of the porn. Yeah. yeah. You know, sp- you know, especially if it's like just tasteful kind of porn. It's not. Yeah, that's the same. It's not in like your face porn. kind of porn, but it's just good clean. I don't. I don't do the uh, role playing at all. And mm-hmm. it's, it's just. Just not your thing. No. I mean, every furry kind of goes into it a little bit differently, but yeah. Um, How about you? Well. I like that porn sometimes. <laughs> it's like, well, I don't like the ungodly fetishy shit. Like, I don't do death. Death is... Yeah, we were just talking about this Death is night. bad. <laughs> it's like, death is bad, okay? And it's like... <laughs> death is bad, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. It's like, so is all the other really crap yeah, and the stuff. But, um, yeah, I'm poor. I do okay with that. I actually, honestly, RP. There's uh, someone in the uh, someone in the actual Ustream chat that I RP with. Ooh, nice. I actually got him to... uh coming to here so he probably knows what i'm talking about <laughs> who i'm talking about yeah but in general we like tasteful porn i don't like anything yeah i'm a, i'm a i've just deemed myself as a vanilla roux but mm. i just i don't like all the extra extremely fetishy stuff but and i'm a gothic fox yeah <laughs> i'm a red kangaroo wiggle, 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 wiggle. <laughs> and you like to shake your booty <laughs> okay continue like to shake it shake it I like to move it, move it. Is there any more questions? Uh, yes. All right. Why do you think there are more males and females in the fandom? Probably because it has an image of a sexual thing. Like, I- even though that's not what the heart of being a furry is, it's you. You can't deny that it, it's everywhere. Like, if you if you look up furry on Google Images, you will find like ninety five percent images are porn. So if a girl goes into this. Um, she'll be like girls like what? porn too. They, yeah, but not but nearly as much as guys. Yeah, yeah. The studies would show the uh, the uh, contrary. I've mm-hmm. I've seen these studies. Yeah, and I I mm-hmm. guess I don't know. It's actually really hard to think about because you know I, I do know some girls in the fandom, but obviously there are a lot more males in the fandom. But I think I think it kind of goes along with you know the old rule of the internet there's no girls on the internet yep <laughs> okay, there are no it's, girls it's, it's just such it's sort of a cultural thing that you know that it seems more, more to there, appeal to guys uh, uh, there's sort of like a pro, perhaps it still started out with uh in the gang they were just programmers mm. which internet programming and hacking was mostly a male dominated area mm-hmm. and you know it just kind of evolved from that point yeah and it's right now it's not right now it's that's it's getting to be uh pretty close to even yeah it's been it's evened out in recent yes. years yeah because it's it's we're slowly getting rid of the furries are all about sex tag yeah but it's it's a, gonna be a long and tedious process what you laughing at no girls on the internet just holograms made <laughs> to look like them <laughs> very tasteful <laughs> I would I would believe that. <laughs> it's on the uh, it's on the Ustream chat. Oh boy, that's funny. The lumbacks that I know should it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do we have any more questions? Um, we've got just the uh, topics. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, we could go into the topics because actually we're three minutes past our dedicated um time for the uh, discussion topic part of the show. Woo! You want to take a ten minute break? Uh yeah, let's do that because yeah, because if we're going to be going actually guys just so you know, um we're going to be go we might be going past the uh seven o'clock mark that we usually stop at before Friday Night Tech comes on, but we're thinking since we got a lot of discussion we have to do today, we're going to end up going over just for the heck like if you want you can Friday Night Tech is mostly just music. So if you want, you can just open up Friday Night Tech and just listen to it while you listen to this, and, it, and everyone wins. So I don't, we don't think you're going to be missing too much. So um, anyways, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're, you have been watching Claws and Convo. We'll be back in approximately 10 minutes. Thank you for watching. Peace and death to tyrants. Woo! You know
not worried, then say the line. If you're not worried, then look in my face. If you're not worried, then be the way you said you were. If that's your all, then give it to me. Drink some soup. Can't call back a bullet once you. Send it out. And I don't have all day for this. Then say you aren't If you're not angry Don't spit in my face If you're not angry Unbreak my arm And fix my chair And reset the table for me Have some tea Can't call back a bullet once you Send it out And I don't have all day for this Crazy, then fix your eyes. If you're not crazy, stop making that face. If you're not crazy, untie my legs, return my coat, and unlock this basket for me. Let me out. Can't call back a bullet one two. Send it out, and I don't have all day for this.
And we're back. It's been 10 minutes. No, it hasn't. What's up? Fine, whatever. Oh, we're still in the middle of eating candy and you're just randomly... Ah, okay. Lady, did you turn down the music yet? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the one and only fabulous, fantastic Claws and Convo. We just got back from our 10 minute break and we're about to descend into our discussion topic uh, section of the show today. And remember, the Skype line is open. The Skype line is open, as you can see right there on the screen. Um, add us on Skype if you want to get involved in the conversation or if you just want to say hi, that's completely okay. We will broadcast your voice over the radio. Or podcast or internet or whatever you want to call it. The series of tubes that the internet is made up of. There we go. So. Furries make the internet go. Thumperman. Are we supposed to know what that means? Your mic was off. (laughs) Do it again. Thumperman. Are we supposed to know what that means? Now one of my friends just told me to say. Okay. (laughs) Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna start talking about this as soon as I'm done eating my Hawaiian punch of jelly beans, because I didn't expect us to start this early. So hold on. Mm. Sorry, guys. Mm. By the way, we got a bowl of candy up here. It's great. We got smarties, Ooh, smarties. and we got jelly beans, lemon heads, trolley eggs, or not trolley eggs, trolley crawlers, like sour gummy worms. They're great. Hmm. Um, your friend wants to know what this guy's name was. You will put it up for a I second. I will put it up. Alright, there you go. Um, add us on Skype if you want to wanna get in on the conversation. It's right there. Make sure you write it down. Don't forget it. Or we will kill you. Just mm. kidding. We'll just torture you. Then we'll kill you. No. <laughs> I'll torture you. <laughs> and Rexon, it was me, Maru. I said, Thumper Man. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached our discussion topic portion of the show. Our discussion topic for today is, uh, or the main one, is why does a perso- is a persona so personal to a person? <laughs> That's funny. Why is a persona so personal to a person? And uh, we also have some topics that were sent to us by Wine Slender. If we run out of things to say about this, we can move on to those. So, uh... Anyways, um, so what do you guys think that a persona is so personal to somebody? <laughs> um, well, I'm gonna go. I think uh, how a persona is personable, so personal, because in my opinion, you can have multiple characters and stuff, and that you can have characters for like RP, for you know, a comic, for you know, for someone, for something you use in artwork or in the story. But a persona is just another way of saying persona, which is you. Mm-hmm. You can't, you know, say like, I, 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 one of the reasons that I would never have my character or my Rue myself ever in a picture where he died is like, in, in my mind, it's just like, so I basically am saying I just killed myself. Mm-hmm. That's just like, well, I'm, I'm seeing myself die. Mm-hmm. That is, That is my view on it. So basically, he just summed up the the biggest view on that is that it is you. Like it's not it's not just it is kind of a create uh, an imagination create a uh, creation of your imagination, but it's also it's, it's a reflection uh, of your inner self. That's exactly right. It's the reflection of your inner self, and part of your your you know it's it's not just a character. It's your it's, identity. It's, it's your identity, <laughs> and that's that's mainly why you know. Everyone, you know, I mean, I have seen like Rachel. You know, she she created a persona, but she doesn't.